will tell you this is one of my favorite songs. But I don't know if uh, running is one of my favorite activities. But right now it is marathon time, and joining us this morning is Mark Sutcliffe. You have a book called, which is called *The Long Road to Boston*. Uh, talking to us a little bit about marathons this morning, and specifically the Boston Marathon. You started running at 31, and yeah. kind of happened upon it. Yeah, it's. I was not athletic as a kid, and that's why I tell people, you know, you don't have to be anything to be a runner. Anybody can be a runner. Uh, anybody can do a marathon. Um, I didn't start out as somebody who was really into sports. I was. I watched a lot of sports, but I didn't participate in a lot of sports. And when I turned 30, I decided I needed to get in a little bit better shape, and I started doing a bit of exercise at the gym. But I, you know, I didn't take on running, and I started running on a treadmill, which was, which was horrible of course. <laughs> the treadmill by the way I tell the story in the book was designed as a torture device for prisoners in Britain. That's a true story. And there's it feels a whole like TED a talk, yeah. There's a whole TED talk about that. That's it's a treadmill because they actually used it to grind grain and punish prisoners. So that's why it's so awful. Yeah. So then I started running outside, which was a lot better, and uh, that's when I kind of fell in love with it and started doing, you know, I did a half marathon and then a marathon. Uh, and I noticed, uh, you know, I have a lot of friends that are runners, and it seems like once they start, there's a, an addiction that happens. Yeah. Uh, it seems like they're willing to drop everything and anything to go out for that run. Yeah, it, it does kind of uh, become a big part of your life, and it becomes part of your lifestyle. And, and uh, you do, you know, even right now, as I've been, you know, waiting to do this, I've been thinking, okay, when am I going to get out there today, even in the rain? So uh, it is, you know, there is, there is something. But I think it's a healthy addiction. There are a lot of people, actually, who have, who have been through other, you know, who've been through substance abuse and recovered from that, and they have kind of replaced that in their lives with running, and they've they've replaced an unhealthy addiction with a healthy one. So, yeah, it, it does have that quality for some people. Um, you need some knowledge. I know some people think you just have to go out and run. There's a proper running style that you need to do. You have to have proper footwear and hydration. Yeah, so you do you do need to be wearing the right shoes, and it's important to, to talk to somebody about the shoes to make sure you you have the shoes that suit your feet and your running style. I encourage people to run naturally. You don't have to focus too much on technique. Just run the way it feels right. Um, but the great thing about running is it is very accessible. You know, you don't need a lot of equipment and, or gear. You, uh, you just need your shoes. You, need, you can just go outside and run. You should start slow if you're taking it up. You should, you know, do run for a minute, walk for a minute, run for a minute, walk for a minute. Uh, don't take on too much at once. Tell me about your book. Your book is uh, about the story about the long road to Boston. Yeah, so for me, uh, once I started running and I started doing marathons, uh, you know, everybody talks about the Boston Marathon. It's the oldest marathon in the world. It's 120 years old, and um, and it's the it's the one big event that you have to qualify for to actually run in. Meaning you've got to run another marathon in a certain time, pretty challenging time, just to be allowed to enter the Boston Marathon. So I started on this long quest to try to get into the Boston Marathon. I'm not naturally fast. I was kind of always right on the cusp of either making it or not making it. And I made a bunch of serious attempts at it, cha you know, training really hard and, and coming up just short. And then I finally got in and, and ran the marathon in 2015. And, and when you ran it and you completed it, what did you look like? <laughs> I, I looked pretty tired. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, pretty happy, though. It was pretty emotional, too, because this, this was a long journey. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was challenging. It, it took everything I had to get there. I'm, uh, I was, I only, ma I only qualified by in the end by about 22 seconds. So uh, I was, I was lucky to be able to do it. So it is called the Long Road to Boston. The book is available almost anywhere books are sold. Fritz, thanks for coming this morning. You're going to go for a run right after this? Uh, maybe a little later. I'm hoping the rain will stop, but I, uh, I don't think it's going to. It's not going to. I'll tell you about that in a couple <laughs> seconds. Thank we'll have you. updates on your weather and as well as your traffic coming up right after the break. For more information, head to breakfasttelevision.ca. And, of course, the book, The Long Road to Boston, available where anywhere books are sold. Yes,